Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Rachel Corman. I'm the Feline Internal Medicine Specialist at CAT Specialist Services. And this is a short video today just to talk about ureteral obstructions in cats um, and also a brief discussion about one of the treatment methods that we use, which is called a sub or a subcutaneous ureteral bypass device. There is another video recording by Dr. Peter Delissa where he'll go into more detail about the actual surgical placement of these devices. So do please also watch this on our website. This is a problem that seems to be increasing in frequency with cats. And what happens is in the normal cat, we see that the kidneys produce urine. This urine flows through the ureter, which is a little tube, down into the bladder and then out through the urethra. And for some reason, cats seem to be producing stones or kidney stones that are typically what we call calcium oxalate stones. And they form and stay in the kidney here and may not cause any damage or any obvious clinical symptoms to the cat. But at some point, what can happen or may happen is that these stones move down into the ureter. And at that point in time, the stones can cause either a complete obstruction, so no urine is able to get past at all, or a partial obstruction where only a small amount of urine is able to flow past. Now, in some patients, when it's their first obstruction, the kidney on the other side takes up the role of trying to maintain that cat's kidney function. And so those cats may not show any obvious clinical symptoms of being unwell. It might be as simple as they miss a couple of meals, they might be a little bit lethargic for a few days, or some cats may actually overgroom over the site of where the stones may be, so they may pull some hair out of that location. But in many cases, this obstruction can go under the radar and people may not see any obvious signs. After the obstruction has passed, what we can sometimes see um, is damage to the inside of the kidney, essentially. So the kidney function starts to reduce. And as the kidney loses function, it will start to shrink. And so sometimes we see cats that have a very small kidney on one side. And as that kidney is shrinking and losing function, the kidney on the other side starts to actually increase in size or hypertrophy as it tries to maintain that role of, of kidney function. The way that we would typically identify your cat as having one of these obstructions is essentially through the use of blood and urine testing and also diagnostic imaging such as x-rays of the abdomen. And some of these stones, particularly the calcium oxalate stones, can be very obvious on x-rays. And we can also use ultrasound. And ultrasound is very important to evaluate um, both the kidney size and also the degree of what we call dilation in this section of the kidney here, which is called the renal pelvis. This is where urine produced within the kidney here filters down into the renal pelvis for movement down into the ureter and down to the bladder. And when we have cats with obstructions in their ureter, this portion of the kidney becomes very dilated. And as you can imagine, if you've got urine trying to flow down here, but it's unable to escape, we get an increase in back pressure into this portion of the kidney. And that starts to have significant knock-on effects to the kidney itself. And we start to lose kidney function because of that. And it's these changes, so this dilation in the renal pelvis, that we look for on ultrasound to confirm that your cat has a ureteral obstruction. 
We may also recommend some other techniques um, that can be important when evaluating your cat. Um, we may suggest giving a dye into the bloodstream of your cat. That dye is then filtered through the kidneys, through the ureters and down into the bladder. And that can help us to also evaluate for a possible obstruction if we're not 100% certain based on blood work um, and imaging techniques that we've already used as to whether your cat does have a significant obstruction or not. Another test that we may sometimes use is what we call pyelocentesis. This is where we pass a needle through the kidney into this pelvis using the ultrasound to guide it into the right location. And there's a couple of different reasons why we might look at doing this. We might be looking for signs of an infection within the kidney or we might try and do this to relieve some of the back pressure on the kidney itself. Finally, it's not always calcium oxalate stones that can cause the obstruction to the kidneys. In some cats, we can see obstruction occurring because of debris, so cells, for example, or pus that might occur when a cat does have a urinary tract infection or we might see dried blood clots that can form and also cause an obstruction in the kidney. Once we have definitively identified that your cat does have an obstruction in their kidney, we may recommend a procedure called a subplacement. So a sub is essentially an implanted device that runs from the kidney up to the body wall. We then have this little implanted device that sits underneath your cat's skin, so between the skin and the muscle of the body wall. And then we have another tube that runs back into the abdomen and into your cat's bladder here. And this allows passage of urine from the kidney through the tubing here and we're bypassing this obstruction. And again, we have a very detailed video on this technique um, by Dr. Peter Delissa, one of our specialist surgeons. So do please watch that. The important thing to remember um, for cats that do have this subcatheter placed is that it's not a set and forget procedure. Although this is absolutely a life-saving device in many cats, particularly cats that have obstructions on both sides of their kidneys, it's certainly not a set and forget process. Part of the problem that these cats have is that they're forming lots of small minerals and crystals within their ureters and their kidneys, and that's what is coming together to form the stones. And that can also form within the catheters that are placed um, into the kidney and into the bladder. And so the way that we try and reduce the risk of this device then becoming obstructed um, is multifactorial. We will definitely recommend that your cat receives a wet food diet. We certainly see an increased incidence of ureteral stones forming in cats that are predominantly fed dry food diets. So immediately changing your cat to a wet food diet is very important. This helps to dilute their urine and reduces the chances of those minerals coming together to form another stone. So once these devices are in place, we do recommend routine flushing of these devices. Typically, we will recommend a flush about a week after the device has first been placed, then one month later, and then every three months um, thereafter. So this is something that is most likely going to be required for the life of your cat. And the main aim is to prevent mineralization forming within this tube that would block the tube, and also to help try and prevent any bacterial infections if bacteria do gain access into the tube, for example, from the cat's bladder. 
So when we place a sub device in a cat, then we will recommend that your cat returns regularly for routine flushing of the system. This is performed typically within seven days of the system first being placed, one month afterwards, and then routinely every three months thereafter. And please do take a look at our website for another video detailing what happens on the day that your cat is coming in for a sub flush. Potential complications that can be associated with this surgery do occur. We do see a higher complication rate in cats that have pre-existing urinary tract infections. And that does have the potential to be life-threatening in some cats. However, we've had multiple cats now that have recovered from their infection and have gone on to, to do very well in the long term. We will always look at culturing the cat's urine, um, probably in multiple occasions, both when they have the sub placed and for monitoring afterwards as well. Other potential complications that we may see, some cats can get blood clots that form within their bladder and they may need flushing of the system with a special drug that's used to try and dissolve the clot. If this happens, it tends to occur within the first couple of days of surgery. And so we do tend to keep cats in for a couple of days after the device has been placed to monitor for any complications that may occur. The other potential complication is mainly just due to the severe illness that some of these cats may be presenting with. And this is an increased risk in cats that have obstructions on both sides. This is a life-threatening condition in cats. If they can't produce urine, then the cats will die from this disease process. Although medical management can be attempted through the use of intravenous fluid therapy and medications to try and relax the ureters to facilitate movement of the stones through the ureters, in most cases this is not successful and we do need to look at implantation of devices such as this. So, if you think that your cat might need one of these devices placed, or if you are concerned that your cat might have a ureteral obstruction, then please don't hesitate to contact your vets or us at any time. Thanks very much for listening and please have a look on our website for further information regarding sub placement and also ureteral obstructions in cats.